There is really no such thing as having been born again without having received the Holy Spirit. If we do not have the Spirit, we, we can't say that we are of God. We can't say that we've been born again. We need the Holy Spirit. We can't live this life without the Holy Spirit. The time has come and the kingdom of God is now at hand. Change the way you think and believe in the good news. Good evening, everyone. My name is Travis Alexis Newsom, and I'm delighted that of all the things you could be doing at this very moment, you have chosen to spend this time here with me tonight. And it is my sincere desire and expectation that this experience will help you to become all that you created to be. So make sure you get ready, subscribe to my YouTube channel, like this video, leave a comment below, share, and tell everyone you know that we're about to grow together as we explore the keys of the kingdom. Once again, I'm so excited that you all are here. Before I do anything else, I want to give a shout out to the KOTK fam. Those of you who regularly watch these videos, who have subscribed to my YouTube channel, who have encouraged me in a myriad of ways, who have engaged in the chat section, you know who you are. As a matter of fact, if you're KOTK fam and you count yourself as KOTK fam, Make sure you check in the chat now. Check in in the chat now. Uh, drop your name. Just greet one another in the chat section. It's always robust and lively conversation. And perhaps you're joining us for the first time. You have no idea who I am, but you just were sent this link and you were curious. Welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. I do not believe a coincidence, but I believe that you have an appointment for a life-changing encounter tonight. Make sure you stay connected. Drop a comment in the uh, in the comment section below the video as well if you're watching this video after its premiere. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel, Travis Alexis Newsom. There you'll find other videos to inspire you in previous episodes of KOTK. Also, make sure you turn on notifications. Hit that bell so that you can be notified every time I drop a new video, every time I upload a new video. You don't want to miss out. Follow me on my social media platforms. You can find me as Travis Alexis Newsom on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, on all of them. Somebody say all of them. <laughs> Follow the hashtag Travis Alexis Newsome. Every time I post something that's designed to inspire and to build up, I try to use the hashtag. So if you're following that hashtag, you'll get alerted anytime I post something new. And if you are not on the email list, if you're not receiving emails from me from time to time with updates about upcoming engagements or further inspiration, make sure you reach out to me and just say, count me in. Just type count me in. And you can email me at travis.alexis.newsome at gmail.com. And lastly, if you prefer physical mail, snail mail, as we call it, feel free to mail me or send me mail, snail mail at Travis Alexis Newsome, P.O. Box number 48, Riverside, Illinois, 60546 in a good old U.S. of A. We have been in an awesome series, if you have not been with us, entitled The Gospel of the Kingdom. And tonight is part 15. Can't believe we've journeyed this long, but I'm excited about tonight. If you've been blessed by the series, make sure you put it in the chat. Explain the ways you've been blessed. Come on, let's light up the chat section, engage, and tell others how you've been blessed by the series, some of the points, some of the key points that have uh, stood out to you the most. Uh, it has been an awesome journey, and I'm looking forward to tonight. Uh, but before we get into it, I want us to have a quick word of prayer, and then we're going to go to our scripture. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this awesome opportunity that you've given us to delve into your word. God, to grow closer to you, to learn more about who you are and who we in you and this great inheritance that you've given us, that we might be made whole. And Father, I pray that tonight be no different. God, I pray that you would meet us in a profound way tonight. I pray that you would have your way in this time together tonight. God, I pray that we would encounter your presence like never before. God, I pray for the gifts of the Spirit to be in full operation. Let revelation, knowledge, and wisdom manifest as we delve into your word. Father, I'm excited about what you're doing. I'm excited about what you're going to do. 
We believe you. We, we, we believe for you to do even greater things as we go deeper into your word. And God, I pray over everyone who is watching this video now. I pray that as they listen, as they hear, as they engage in the chat, Father God, I pray that they would be transformed by your power. God, we thank you and we count these things as done by faith right now in Jesus' mighty name. And if you agree with that, say it is so. Yes and amen. Again, like I said, we're going to continue tonight on part 15. Wow. Part 15 of this series that we've been on entitled The Gospel of the Kingdom. So I want to launch off tonight from our foundational text that we've been looking at this whole series. And that comes out of Mark chapter 1, verses 14 through 15. And it reads, Now after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, The time is fulfilled. And the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is now at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. And for those of you who might be new uh, to these videos and you have not been watching the past 14 episodes in particular that we've been on this series, I want to make sure we hit on some key points that are going to be important to understand and consider as we move forward. For those who have been watching, this is always a good time just to review. I will not go through every major point that we've hit on, but these are some that I've chosen that I think are important for us to move forward tonight. The first being this, that the kingdom of God refers to God's exceeding and abundant ability to act or produce an effect by virtue of his authority as the creator and absolute owner of all things. And I believe that's worthy of reading again. The kingdom of God refers to God's exceeding and abundant ability to act or produce an effect by virtue of his authority as the creator and absolute owner of all things. The time is fulfilled simply means the time has come or the time is now. The kingdom of God is at hand means that the kingdom of God is within your reach. And one's proximity to the kingdom of God is not a matter of time nor space, but understanding. The word repent refers to change the way you think. Furthermore, to believe is to think to be true or, as I like to put it, to become real to you. When you believe something, that means it has become real to you. The word gospel simply means good news. And the kingdom of God was made accessible to us through Christ himself. And we have access to the kingdom in regard to attitude, authority, and appearance. The name of Jesus Christ gives us the authority to think of ourselves as children of God. And that word authority simply means freedom granted by one in authority or right. And furthermore, the word right means something to which one has a just claim, such as the power or privilege to which one is justly entitled. And then this point here was the key point from our time last week. Gotta watch it. I encourage you, rewatch all these videos. Watch as many times as you feel led to make sure your understanding, you may even have questions. Um, there may be some things that you didn't understand or some things you feel you missed. I leave all these videos on my YouTube channel so you can go back and review and watch as many times as you like. But this was the key point from last week, and that is this. Baptism in the name of Jesus Christ is the God-ordained way in which we publicly profess our faith in Jesus Christ as the Son of God, the one through whom we gain access into the kingdom. I'm going to say that one more time. Baptism in the name of Jesus Christ is the God-ordained way in which we publicly profess our faith in Jesus Christ as the Son of God, the one through whom we gain access into the kingdom. Wow. So those are a lot of key points. Again, if you have not been on this journey with us or if you have been on this journey and some of the stuff still seems new or maybe you forgot, make sure you go back and watch those previous episodes so you can be caught up to speed in terms of where we are. But out of respect for those who have been on this journey and who are ready to go into the new material for tonight, I'm ready to dive in. So turn with me, if you will, to John chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. John chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. And it reads, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Mm. Jesus answered and said to him, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Wow. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born 
When he is old, can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit of the spirit is spirit. Do you not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again? The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered and said to him, are you the teacher of Israel and do not know these things? Wow. And we have read in your hearing out of John chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. There's a lot to take in here, but basically a Pharisee by the name of Nicodemus had come to Jesus, as the scripture says, by night. And it's important to know that the Pharisees were a sect of Jews, if you were, or Judaism that rose probably during uh, the exile, uh, Babylonian exile. And now they had risen to a level of status where they're considered the religious elite, if you will. They're considered the go-tos, if you will, in terms of understanding the ways of God. And truth be told, they had prided themselves, if you will, in being uh, the spiritual elite, the creme de la creme, if you will, of the spiritual community in the, in the Jewish world. And so now you have a situation where Nicodemus comes to him by night. And I think that has a lot to do with the fact that there is stigma with Jesus among the Pharisees because with all that he was doing and all that he was teaching, that the miracle signs and the wonders that he was working and with the great wisdom and insight in which he was teaching, they weren't necessarily a fan of the fact that he was messing up their game, if you will. He was messing up the spiritual game. He was new to these spiritual streets, if you will, or that's how they saw him. But they had issue with him. And it is likely that Nicodemus was concerned about the perception of him going to visit Jesus, which is why it's noted, it seems that he came alone. It does not appear, according to the scriptures, that he came with an entourage. It seems that he came by himself at night. And here he is inquiring of Jesus, essentially saying, it's apparent that you've got something going on here, that, that you must have some kind of connection with God. We know that you could not do all these great and powerful things that you're doing, lest you're, you're with God, or more specifically, God were with you. But Jesus' response here always gets me. It's curious. It's, it's like he hits straight to the point. As they say, straight with no chasers. He gets straight to the point and says, you must be born again. It's, it's almost as if, it's almost as if, He's anticipating that Nicodemus is coming with curiosity, wanting to know how to do some of the stuff that Jesus was doing. It's almost like he suspects that and he bypasses that whole part of the conversation. And he says, in order to see the kingdom, not just to enter the kingdom, in order to see it, you need to be born again, born of the water and of the spirit, born of God, essentially. I want to establish this first. Point. Let, let's settle this before we move forward. That one must be born again, born of the spirit in order to see or enter the kingdom of God. We must remember that one must be born again, born of the water, or excuse me, born of the spirit in order to see or enter the kingdom of God. But again, what does it mean to be born again? What, what is this phraseology that Jesus used here? Nicodemus' question was understandable. Nobody here really heard this term like this before. So if we look at the word born, it's from the Greek word in this text, geneo. And metaphorically, in a Jewish sense, it's of one who brings others over to his way of life. Again, in a Jewish sense, which is relevant because we're talking about Jewish culture here, is of one who, who brings others, who brings others over to his way of life. In another place, it says, if one teaches the son of his neighbor the law, the scripture reckons this the same as though he had begotten him that he begotten him. And that word begotten is interesting because it essentially means brought into existence by or as if by a parent. Hmm. Brought into existence by or is as if by a parent. Consider 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15, for example. Paul writes and says, for though you might have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. So here we're finding this pattern of being born again, likened to being the first birth, if you will, and that you're begotten of your parents. You are brought forth into existence by your parents, whoever your parents were. 
So Jesus, in talking about being born of the Spirit, he's essentially saying what I would like to call our point, our second point for tonight, and that is this. To be born again is to be begotten or brought into existence by the Spirit of God as children of God. I'm going to say that again. To be born again is to be begotten, brought into existence by the Spirit of God as children of God. So no different than being born naturally, water, if you will, by water, being born naturally, the first birth is by two parents from which we come out from. To be born of the Spirit is to come out from God or out of the Spirit of God, to be made alive by the Spirit of God. We're going to delve deeper into that. But then that begs the question, how are we actually born again? Take a look at 1 John chapter 5, verse 1, part A to be specific. And it reads, whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And that leads me to point number three for tonight. Woo! It's getting deep, isn't it? Point number three for tonight is this. We are born again by believing that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. We are born again by believing that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. It would seem simple. And honestly, it is. But I want to tease you with the question. Does believing that Jesus is the Christ mean that one has been born again? Is it as simple as just believing? We, we know that's the way to be born again. But does that actually constitute one being born again? I want you to think about that. What actually constitutes being born again? Are they one and the same? And I know there are many who are watching this and they, they may say, Travis, a lot of this stuff is fundamental. Why are you going into this? Well, for some, it may be. For some, it's not. And as we go into some of the other material and the further, as we go deeper into the series, it's going to be important that we have this part established and that for the sake of KOTK, that we're all on the same page. I, I want to draw your attention to something here. Go back to John chapter three, verses one through two, specifically verse six. Because the question becomes, what constitutes being born again, right? Believing is the way, but what actually constitutes being born again? And if we look at verse six, Jesus said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That's the first birth. That which is born of the spirit hmm, is spirit. Then look at verse eight. The wind blows where it wishes and you hear the sound of it but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Interesting. Very interesting. So we see here that being born again is a work of the Spirit of God, namely the Holy Spirit. Being born again is a work of the Spirit of God, namely the Holy Spirit. That's going to be critical. And again, that's not negating the simplicity of what the epistle of John says in 1 John chapter 4, when he says that one who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born, has been born again or is born again. It doesn't negate that, but stay with me. I want to draw your attention to Romans chapter 8 verse 9. Something very important here, because we're establishing that essentially that the Holy Spirit is what is what we are begotten of for those who are born again. That's what Jesus emphasizes back as recorded in John chapter three. To be born of the spirit means that we are begotten of the spirit. Check this out, Romans chapter eight, verse nine. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. Wow, that's heavy. If anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. So we notice this pattern in the letters, in the epistles. There is really no such thing as being born again, oh God, without having received the Holy Spirit. 
Can I say that again? There is really no such thing as having been born again without having received the Holy Spirit. Paul makes it clear here in Romans chapter 8, verse 9, that if we have not received the Spirit, we're none of His. If we do not have the Spirit, we are not of his. We, we can't say that we are of God. We can't say that we've been born again. Because truth be told, we have not if we have not received the Holy Spirit. Mm. Turn with me if you were Acts chapter 8. Woo! It's, it's getting thick in here, isn't it? Acts chapter 8, I, I can feel it. Relax, y'all. We're, we're going to go deeper. You're going to be okay. Acts chapter 8, verses 12 through 16. This, this is one of the passages that we looked at last week. But when they believed Philip as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. So watch this. They believed and they were baptized. Check this out. Verse 13. Then Simon himself also believed, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and was amazed, seeing the miracles and signs which were done. But check out verse 14. Now, when the apostles were at Jerusalem, the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God. They sent Peter and John to them. Verse 15, who, when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet he had, he had fallen upon none of them. Wow. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So this is interesting. These people had been baptized, had believed. They heard the message of the name of Jesus Christ and of the kingdom. They had been baptized in Jesus' name, but they had not received the Holy Spirit until they came and laid hands on him and prayed over them. Interesting, isn't it? Now check out another passage that we looked at last week. That comes out of Acts chapter 19, verse, verses 1 through 6. And it reads, And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus and finding some disciples, he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? My God. So they said to him, We have not so much heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, Into what then were you baptized? So they said, Into John's baptism. Mm. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. This is profound. So in both these passages, we see a pattern where it wasn't a matter of just believing or being baptized, but receiving the Holy Spirit. And that goes back to our point that essentially there is no such thing as having been born again without having received the Holy Spirit. There is no such thing, ladies and gentlemen, you won't find it in scripture. And Paul made it clear that one that don't, one who has not received the spirit, that one who does not have the spirit is none of his. You can't count yourself, my God, as, as a born again child of God without having received the spirit of God. As the, as the expression goes, that dog won't hunt. Lord have mercy. Furthermore, it is by the Holy Spirit that we are begotten of God. I, I, I want to hit on this because I know some of you may be struggling and you may be saying, well, wait a minute, are you saying because there are different views, different theological views as it, as it relates to what it means to receive the Holy Spirit. And if you have not already, I want to encourage you after this video, check out a video I did some time ago entitled Be Filled with the Holy Spirit, where I really go into breaking down what it means to receive the Holy Spirit and the signs of receiving the Holy Spirit and so forth. Um, that's very important. But some of you may be wondering, like, how does this work? Because maybe you have been taught that one can be born again and then receiving the Holy Spirit is like the second work of grace, if you will, that happens later on. And you won't find that in the biblical record. You find people believing. You find people, uh, how should I say, you find people um, being baptized. Um, but in terms of culminating, being born again, you won't find that. You won't find that without one having received the Holy Spirit. Let's establish this our, our first, fourth point. Believing is the key, is the way to be born again, but it is, 
but it is constituted by receiving the Holy Spirit, not just believing. Can I say that again? Believing, my God, is the way to be born again, but it is constituted by receiving the Holy Spirit, not just believing. Just because, just because we have believed does not mean we've been born again. It's constituted by receiving the Holy Spirit. Help me, Lord. It's, it, you know, it makes me think of, it makes me think of a man and a woman coming together in what should be holy matrimony. I'm talking in code just in case there are kids watching who have not had the talk yet. So for the sake of that, we'll just say a man and woman are coming together. You get the gist of what I'm saying. And just because they come together doesn't mean that they're going to get pregnant. Now, that is the way to become pregnant, right? If you're seeking to have children. But just because they come together doesn't mean that they're going to be pregnant. It's sort of like that. Believing is the way to be born again. But just because you have believed doesn't mean you have received the spirit or have been born again. As we saw in Acts chapter 8 and Acts chapter 19. Woo! Somebody might say, well, what about the scripture that we read in 1 John? I know what you're talking about. I get what you're saying. But consider this out of the same book. In John, 1 John chapter 4, verse 7, he says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Does that mean who everyone who loves or has some semblance of love knows God or who has or has been born of God? Not necessarily. Right? So what John is talking about in his epistle are signs of having been born again. But the essence of being born again is being born from above or born of God or more specifically, born of the spirit. And that leads me to my close for the night. Point number five, to be born again means that one is now begotten of God by virtue of having received the Holy Spirit whose indwelling empowers the individual to become a child of God. My God have mercy. Can I say that again? To be born again means that one is now begotten of God by virtue of having received the Holy Spirit, whose indwelling empowers the individual to become a child of God. So my question to you is, have you been born again? Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believe? Lord, have mercy. Lord, I, I wish I had more time. Oh, God, I wish I had more time. Because we need the Holy Spirit. Woo! I got to stop here. Let me stop here. It's dangerous. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. And I praise you for this opportunity to delve into your word. And God, I pray for those tonight, tonight who've been watching this video, who have maybe come to some level of belief as it relates to Jesus Christ being the Son of God, but they have not received the Holy Spirit. God, I pray that you fill them with the Holy Spirit. I pray that as they seek your face, I pray that you would baptize them with the Holy Spirit. Refresh them even now. Cause them to to know you in the intimate way, to know that they are in you and you are in them without a shadow of a doubt. We ask these things in Jesus' name and everybody who agreed with this prayer said amen. Wow, I know we covered a lot tonight. Woo, didn't we? If you missed some stuff, go, go back, rewind, watch this video. Make sure you take note. You might have questions. If you have questions, drop it in the chat section below. Drop it in the comment section below. I'll try to take a peek at some of those questions later on and maybe address them in future videos. We covered a lot tonight. Woo! But how many know we need the Holy Spirit? We can't live this life without the Holy Spirit. We can't enter into the kingdom of God without receiving the Holy Spirit. I feel tempted to go back into it, but I'm not because I'm running behind and the time is out. So make sure you connect with me on my various platforms. Make sure you leave a comment in the comment section below. Subscribe to my channel, Travis Alexis Newsom. Make sure you turn on notifications. Follow me on my various social media platforms, especially on Facebook and on Instagram and on Twitter. Uh, make sure that you email me, travis.alexis.newsom at gmail.com. And then lastly, make sure that you send me mail if you're inclined. Snail mail, physical mail at Travis Alexis Newsom, P.O. Box number 48, Riverside, Illinois, 60546 in the good old U.S. of A. Wow. And my sincere prayer is that everything you encounter this week contributes to you becoming all that God the Father created you to be in the name of Jesus Christ and by the power of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Make sure you watch next week. We're going deeper. We're going deeper in the subject. Woo! Make sure you say bye to one another in the chat section. God bless you all. Have a fantastic rest of your evening in Jesus' name. God bless you.